Hello and welcome to this Android Studio tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be fetching data from the web and displaying it within our Android app. We're going to do this as simple as possible. So I found a web API which is a currency API which does not require a key. However, if you do require a key, you basically just sign up to whatever website it is and you put that key into the URL as well. When we fetch data from the web, we can't actually do it in the main UI thread. So we're gonna be creating a second secondary thread, which is going to fetch the data from the web. And then we are going to receive that data in JSON format. We're gonna use a Google third-party plugin. And then once we've decoded our information from JSON, into our Kotlin object, we can then pretty easily display it within our app. So before we get started on this tutorial, I actually want to give a shout out to BenQ. A couple of weeks ago, they sent me out a monitor and screen bar to test out, and I just wanted to share my experiences so far. So the monitor itself is a 1920 by 1080p display. The monitor has some really nice features. For someone that likes to swap between portrait and landscape, it's really easy to adjust. It can connect to your laptop or your computer via DisplayPort, HDMI or USB-C. I've got it plugged into my laptop here via USB-C and it's actually charging my laptop, which is pretty cool. Where this monitor is distinguishing itself from its competitors are all of its different eye care features. It has a brightness intelligence mode, which lightens and darkens certain areas of the screen depending on the ambient light. It has a low blue light mode for evening work it has the paper mode, it has a coding mode. Basically, there are a lot of options. The monitor also comes with some companion software. It's called the iCareU, and it's only available on Windows right now, but I'm told it's coming to Mac in June, so really soon. The screen bar light, though, is one of those things that I probably wouldn't have ever bought on my own, but now that I own one, I couldn't imagine not owning one. It's really awesome. It, it adjusts with the light of the day. I pretty much just leave it on all day, uh, regardless of the light conditions, and it will dim or go a bit brighter. So yeah, there'll be links in the description to both the monitor and the screen bar if you're interested. Yeah, like I said, the monitor is pretty solid if you're in that sort of mid-tier budget and the screen bar, I would give it five out of five. Until you use one, you sort of think, oh, I don't need one. But then once you do use it, you go, man, that was awesome. So yeah, let's get back into the tutorial. Cool, so creating a new Android project, I'm just gonna call this fetch data from web tutorial and Kotlin is our programming language. First thing I'm gonna do is actually open up Safari and paste in our web API just into any browser. And you can see if I go to this URL, it is going to return some JSON. And I'm just gonna copy all of that, um, open up a new tab and just type in pretty JSON. So I just wanna make this JSON a bit easier to read. And yeah, so that's looking a bit better. So I'm gonna copy and paste that out now and just put that in a text editor. So this is basically the format of the data that we're gonna receive when we use this URL. So when we query this URL. Cool, so we're gonna put that away for now and let's get started on our layout. I'm just gonna change the text of this text view to be last updated. Give it a text color of black. Text size is 15 SP. We're gonna give it a little bit of margin to the top, so 20 DP. We're gonna give it an ID of last updated. And then I'm gonna copy and paste down that text view and just changing the ID to being the base currency, which for me is gonna be AUD. So I'm just gonna say AUD uh, 1.00. I'm extracting those string resources. So just calling that one base currency. And we're gonna make the text size a little bit bigger. Cool, so now we are going to change some of the constraint layout constraints and just gonna say our constraint, our last updated, we just want it to sit just above our base currency. So we're just gonna have a row yeah, I was getting a bit confused, but basically I needed to add in the IDs and I actually didn't need this constraint here. Cool, I'm also gonna make the textile bold for our AUD and then I'm gonna paste that down and create a line for NZD, so New Zealand dollars. And I'm just gonna sit that below our base currency and just changing the text as well as the ID and extract that to a string resource. So this is a very simple layout. I'm just gonna have them all in a row. Yeah, so we're gonna have AUD, what it is in New Zealand dollars, as well as US dollars and a Great Britain pound. Cool, so now that we've got our layout all sorted, I'm gonna head into the build gradle and just enable view binding. So I'm just gonna say build features and say view binding is true. We're gonna sync our project and we can close off the build gradle now. Head into our main activity Kotlin. Uh, we're just gonna declare that our binding, so of our activity main binding. Binding is equal to our layout inflator and we're gonna set our content view with our binding root. And then we're gonna create a function which is going to fetch our currency data. This is going to return a thread 
and we're just going to return a thread with some curly brackets and inside our thread we're going to say our URL is equal to a new URL and we're just going to paste in that URL that we used at the start and we're just going to import the java.net version of URL and this is one of those things where the curly bracket actually needs to be on the upper line and then below our URL we're going to say connection is equal to URL open connection as HTTP URL connection and if our connection response code is 200 so equal to 200 we know that the connection has been successful otherwise we're just going to throw an error message so I'm just going to throw that in our base currency text and just say that we failed to fetch the data basically cool so if our connection is successful we are going to declare a variable calling it input system which is equal to our connection input stream and we're going to just print out this line and I'm going to run this in debugger mode so that we can just see what we've got, um, see that we're hitting the API correctly with our URL. And I've gotten an error message, it looks like. Uh, no, it, it didn't hit our breakpoint because we didn't actually call it. So I just need to say fetch currency data and then start. So that's actually going to call our thread function. And you can see we've got an exception here saying we do not have permission for internet. So that's pretty easily fixed. We just need to go into our Android manifest and say users permission and the permission name is Android Permission Internet. So let's try that again, just hitting the debugger mode and hopefully we'll hit our breakpoint, which we have. And you can see we've got an input system, which is our input stream. And I was hoping that it would actually show the response, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, let me just have a quick look in connection. And you can see there's the URL, but it, I can't seem to find response anywhere. But anyway, we'll just keep moving um, from this. So I'm gonna stop that debugger. And next what we want to do basically is I'm going to assume that we've got our JSON back correctly. So I'm going to add a dependency, which is our JSON. So we're just going to add the dependency and sync our project. And then we're going to say new Kotlin class. I'm going to call this request. And I'm actually just going to open up that original um, pretty JSON that we got at the start. And this way we can sort of model the data into our Kotlin objects based off of the result. So the outermost object, we're just going to call this request and it's going to contain a result. So you could actually just pull out every single one of these things and populate our object, but I don't really need all of the information. So I'm just gonna just sort of cherry pick the ones that I'm interested in. So I'm getting the last time it's updated, the next time it will update, uh, whether it was successful and the base currency code, which in this case will be AUD. And then inside that, we've actually got an array of all the different conversion rates. So we're actually gonna create another object, which is gonna sit inside our request and this object we're going to call currency. So what is one Australian dollar in New Zealand dollars? Um, again, I'm just cherry picking out the three currencies that I want, but there's no reason why I couldn't literally just put in every single one of those currency codes and I, it, the data should populate. So anyway, our currencies are all of type double and then our request has a currency object in it. So we just add that one in there as rates. Oh, and I should mention that those names need to match exactly for the JSON to work. Cool, so we're gonna remove our print line statement and we're gonna declare an input stream reader. We're gonna give it our input system and the char name is gonna be UTF-8. We're gonna create a request using our JSON from JSON. So from G JSON from JSON, a bit of a mouthful. We're gonna give it our input re stream reader and our request class, so as the root. And then we just need to close our stream as well as our stream reader. That's just good practice. And then we're gonna create a function which is going to update the UI given our request. So when the URL is run, it should actually populate our request as well as our currency data. So we're actually, all we have to do now is say run on the UI thread and then Kotlin run and populate the text views with the text that we've got stored in our object. So we're gonna say last updated is equal to our, our last updated text is equal to our request last time updated. We're going to set our New Zealand text to our request rates New Zealand dollars and our New Zealand dollars are actually stored in a double so we're going to use string format and we're going to put the currency as well as the variable and then we're just going to say point to f which is going to format it to two decimal places. Paste down that line and do the same thing for US dollars as well as Great Britain pound and that's it. That's as simple as it gets. 
So yeah, we fetch a very basic amount of information from the web. We decode it from its JSON format into our Kotlin objects, and then we display it within each of our text views. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.